Watch out, it's a live mic. This is Mark McNeese in New York City, and you're listening to another edition of the Live Mic Podcast. Welcome back to the Live Mic Podcast. This is Mark in New York City, and it's been a while since I did one of these. And that's really just because there are only so many hours in a day, as my guest today knows. It's Rick Rose. I'll bring him on in a minute. We've been podcasting together for a long time, on and off, doing all different kinds of projects. But anyways, he's my special guest today. We're going to talk about the film that he's um, directing and producing and that I wrote, full disclosure, the screenplay for. But before we jump into that, I just want to let everybody know uh, very exciting news on the uh, the mystery front, my Kyle Callahan mysteries. I've got two brand new audio books out, Death by Pride, narrated by the amazing Casey Kelly. And Death in the Headlights, featuring Detective Linda, which just came out, like, today, overnight, um, on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. And that's narrated by Daniela Asatelli. And Detective Linda gets her own series uh, this September. It's called Glass Room at the Cliff's Edge. Detective Linda and her wife, Kirsten. Kyle is not in this book. She demanded her own book. She's the baddest lesbian with a gun in rural New Jersey, so I had no choice. But uh, in celebration of that, and because happiness is a new reader, Murder at Pride Lodge, the book that started it all four years ago, is now 99 cents forever. It even says that on the cover now. And as we know, Rick, 99 cents is the new free. So let's get my guest on here. He's been patiently listening to me in the green room. Our green room remains, Rick, by the way. It never goes away. Hmm. Hi. Good Hi. morning. Hi. Are you listening? Are you That's just like, are you drifting? No, I'm totally listening, and um, uh, yeah, I didn't know the green room existed. However, do oh, the Rick, interns we, still exist? Rick, we've had the green room for a long time. I know that, but I mean, I didn't know it still existed without me. No, it hasn't been. It, cause, I have a li- I have like a, li- a 99 year lease. So, oh, well, that's awesome. But what about the staff? I mean, it always had great staff. We, well, Missy's yeah, but she's going to um, NYU. So mm-hmm. that's good. So, I don't know what's happening with the other ones. Her career starting and ours is ending. Yes. Well, I may, I may see them in the unemployment line because my office is closing. <laughs> Five of us are losing wow. our jobs. Um, anyways, but I'm excited because I'm going to do all kinds of fabulous stuff. I've already been doing it, but now I'm going to have the time to like multiply it ten times, including wow. whatever you and I decide to do. I know we will, we've been working on stuff together for 30 years, and that's we're going to keep doing it. And yes, we have some... I was, some options for us. Oh my god! Oh my god! Just push the video without knowing it. Sorry, stop. That's, uh, I knew you weren't paying attention. I knew I it, I Rick. Was. <laughs> I knew it. So listen, I'm going to get you talking because that way you'll focus. Let's talk about the, this fabulous short film. It's called Keeping On. I'm so happy and honored that you um, and Pam asked me to write the script for it. So tell everybody about it. What's going on with it? What the what, where it's at in the process. Sure. Well, let's be clear. First of all, it, you make it sound as if it's not about me. I'm not engaged and I'm not interested. And that's not true. No, I know. <laughs> I, I'm just playing with you because people know <laughs> people know, people who've heard us over the years know that this is what we do. I know you're paying attention. Well, you were probably looking at your very own um, Indiegogo campaign video, which is fine. Yes. That, thank you for the save. That's what friends do after 30 years. They pick on each other and they save each other. And Yes, I'm very excited about this movie. As a matter of fact, I want to first of all shout out to Olivia de Havilland, 100 years old yesterday, Gone with the Wind. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, I didn't know she was still alive. That's amazing. I didn't know that either. Movie making magic. Yes, we have a short film in front of us. And and indeed, Mark, I'm very excited about all your ventures. I want to clear that up. And I'm always there to support you, whether I'm an active part of it or more passive on the sidelines supporting you because you are brilliant. We have collaborated for 30 years. We're trying to find our next project. We'll talk about this one, but... I'm excited about some future things. Some of these things are things you and I have had on hold, and maybe the timing wasn't right, but the future will hold the the answer to when the time is right. But I really do look forward to working with you. I love your work. I have every one of your books. Um, I listen to your podcasts. I, fo- I still follow WTSR, which I don't know if it's – it's still somewhat active, right? You're oh, yeah. It's, to- it's totally active. It's never going to not be active because it won't let me get rid of it. It's like Brokeback Mountain. I can't mm-hmm. quit it. It just won't let me. And well, I got, you're and looking I, for your and I got a bunch three, of new, 300 subscribers. Well, I I, I, I blew I blew past that yesterday. I got like oh, ten did, new yeah. ones yesterday. 
Good. That was old news then yesterday. Yeah, I gotta re I gotta redo it for the email that goes out tomorrow to say, you know, exciting fireworks stuff. We blew past three hundred instead of help me get. Oh, that's past great. It. Tie it in. Yeah. Tie it in with the holiday. Always I love it, Mark. Always. Now mm. let's talk about this movie, Rick. Well, yeah, we're in the final states of it. You know, this is a three day weekend. We brought our uh, color correctionist and slash audio. Uh, post audio expert over from Houston. His name is Trey Motes. He's over at Pam's house right now. Pam, that you mentioned, Mark, is my um, co filmmaker on this project. You, of course, as our collaborations go, were part of the project by writing the written word. I'm directing it, Pam's acting in it. Um, now she will go out, now she and I will go out and start to preach the good word of the movie. It's called Keeping On. As you mentioned, we're in the crowdfunding stages of it. We've had 92 people contribute to this film so far, Mark. That's a record number. It's amazing. Yesterday, we had a $5 anonymous donor. We had a $100 donor who are two of my good friends, Alan and Janice, his wife, um, who also helped us with one of the locations. So that's the beauty of this film market. It, it's set in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I'm calling in from, and it's filmed entirely in Shreveport, Louisiana. And the mm-hmm. people of Shreveport really came behind this project, which is quite amazing considering we're in the South, and the theme of the movie really is love over hate. It's family relations. It's universal love, universal hate. However, it is an LGBT storyline, and um, that make, makes me even more proud to know we're telling the story of the South and shooting it in the South. Yes, and it's it's while it's loosely based on a true story. It's that's I think that one of the taglines. It's based on a true story, sort of. Um, mm-hmm. And you got a great cast. I've I've been able to see like little secret um, preview stuff. And it just looks amazing. I'm very proud of you and everybody. Well, thanks. Yeah, the cast is wonderful, too. The entire cast, let me think, I'm going through my head, is from this area. Uh, the two leads, it's a, you know, a gay couple. Uh, one lives down, he's actually from Portland, Oregon. Um, his name is Colby Dahlstrom. Great actor. Usually plays German Nazis, so this is a big change for him to play the young love interest. And he's partnered with an older gentleman who comes out of Lafayette. But Colby now lives down in... Um, New Orleans and Chip Carrere, who was from Lafayette, who plays his lover in the movie, um, actually now lives in Mandeville. So the two of them auditioned together. They'd never met their across the 20 mile bridge, uh, the Pacha train or whatever the the body of water there is in New Orleans. And they've they've subsequently, Mark, become really good friends and they go on dates together. They went two weeks ago to see Wicked without their you know significant other wives, spouses, whatever that mm-hmm. happened to be. Two straight men playing two gay men, which is kind of an, a, a uniqueness, if you will, too. And they forged a really great friendship because of the characters you created based on reality. And um, that says a lot about your work, Mark. It's a brilliant script you took. So for those of you that know Mark's work, Mark can write long novels. Mark can write short things. But you took a story that took place over 20 years and condensed it into 15 minutes because this is a short film. And I applaud you for that. And the actors applauded you for it because you really nailed it, Mark. That's a hard thing to do. Have you ever – I know you've written you know, plays and stuff, but did you ever think you could write a short film? Um, no, I'd never tried before. And it was really um, – I liked the challenge of it. I liked having to I – like, I liked having to condense it. It's like the difference between a short story and a novel. It's very, right. di- they're very different things because you have to – things have to be told concisely and you know, there's no – there's no fat on these things. Well, and, especially uh, when there's so, and this movie has a lot of plot twists, and to, to hit those plot t- twists, tits, uh, um, to develop the characters, um, to create that universal theme of love versus hate in 15 minutes. I mean, really, Mark, and I, I don't think I informed you, but we were actually last time you knew we were over. We were about 20, what, seven minutes, and I said we need to trim back, and we ended up being at coming in at about 13 minutes and gave us plenty of room for credit roll. And we want to do one of those things at the end to tell where the people are now, you know, how that comes up in the movie. I think they're called epitaphs uh, because I think people want to know what happened to these people. You only see them for 15 minutes or in this case, 13 minutes. And you're like, where are they now? But yeah, we got it down to 13 minutes, Mark. From, from, cause it sounded like you said it was 27 and you got it to 13. It wasn't 27 minutes long. It was, you meant 20 like something, yeah. 22, 20. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And you and I thought of cutting a scene, but that scene was too critical to the movie. So we went back in, the editor and myself, my friend Eva Contis, who's a wonderful editor uh, down in New Orleans. We went down to edit it there. And um, yeah, we got it down to a precise 13 minutes. Now, a couple more things. <clears throat> this was 
this was this is intended for entry into tell me about the film um contest competition yeah that's really cool that you bring that up uh, shout out to my friends my friend gregory Callenberg started the louisiana film prize about five years ago it's coupled with a couple other prizes it's coupled with the louisiana music prize it's coupled with the startup prize which my friend sabrina atz it runs for him chris lyons kind of runs this award and then the fourth award uh, program he has with it is the louisiana food prize which i was there in the beginning of uh, uh, my wearing my other hat on behalf of the Shreveport times and that honors the best, you know, food in the state. And one music, one startup is for entrepreneurs. And the film prize is the largest cash prize for a short film festival. It's a fifty thousand dollar prize. And what's also awesome about this um, festival, or if you will, because it does play out as a as a festival at the end. Um, there's a, a process of submission, which we're in now. Ten days, we have to all submit our films. 170 people, I think, signed up to do the film. I don't know how many will actually submit, but let's say it's close to that number. That's narrowed down to 20 top finalists in August. Then the last day of September and the first day of October, as it falls this year, you'll actually be able to come to Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, and we're really hoping you and your husband come, Mark, and see the films on the big screens across town, and then you vote for it. So the beginning is uh, adjudic adjudicated by a panel, but a big part of the, the vote to get the win is really people seeing all 20 voting on all, you know, 20 movies and a winner selected from, from that weekend. So we're excited about that too. Well, as you know, now, as I mentioned in the beginning, my, I won't be working in an office, so we will, we will have, we'll be free to come. I, I mean, maybe we would drive and you would have to put us up because we're both unemployed. Yeah, putting up is not a problem. I have a great act. <laughs> underemployed. Never say unemployed. Yeah, underemployed. 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 Yes. But yes, my attic is open. My garage is open. I have, I'm have. i moving this weekend, too. Mark and I were talking, yes, in the in the green room. So I should have looked around and realized there was a green room because we were speaking in it earlier. But um, no, Mark, definitely stay at my place. And I will feed you at the Waffle House. Um, we'll get you taken care of when you're here. And that's contingent on it being one of the 20, right? Oh, and, it, and, and, you know, I feel confident. I feel, you know, for us, it's it's beyond. I mean, the fact that we shot it in Shreveport would make sense that we entered in the prize. The fact that we believe in this prize, want to support the prize, makes sense we'd entered in the prize. Um, the fact that it's an LGBT theme, however, um, leads very well to it going to other festivals across the country right. and across the U.S., actually. You know, one of the things Pam and I talked about, and Gregory, actually, from the film prize, loves when films can go on to other uh, festivals because they show you know hey they debuted here at the louisiana film prize and he, he honors that too i think usually the top five get entries into other festivals but the cool thing that pam and i realize is that the story we're telling which is really one of being gay in the south if you will resonates um internationally number one because people love southern states you know they love the accent they love you know the food they they find it fascinating across the world it's a mm -hmm. very defined part of our country, if you will, but they also, you know, how the LGBT story is currently playing out in the South with backlash and, um, you know, a lot of that going on. We think it's a, a vital time to take this story, your story, Mark, <clears throat> out into um, into the world and let people hear what's going on. Well, and so offline, send me the those dates just so I can put them in the calendar, whether we're whether we are able to get there or not. For so. sure. And then also, we could uh, visit my family in Mississippi because we weren't we were not going to go to Mississippi un after their law passed. But as you may know, yes, uh, th yeah, Thursday night, week. district judge right. over overturned that heinous law. So now we would go to Mississippi again. Well, that's good, and I'm I'm, I'm one like you. You know, I, I believe that we have to take a stand, and one one or two people can make a difference. But well, we want you here. Well, and we also it's a matter of it's a matter of security. It's not just a it's not just um, about how I feel politically and socially. But I don't. I'm not going to a state where Frank could end up in the hospital and some and you know and and they won't let me in the room and some shit like that. That's not going to yeah. happen. But um, last yeah, I don't think people realize that. Yeah. I got a I got a wrap up here question for you, just in terms of a learning curve because I've known you for a long, long time. But you just never cease to amaze me. It's like there you are with these like highfalutin cameras and and you're posting and stuff. I, we we you've done TV forever, but was there a learning curve for this for you? Is there anything that you had to do with this movie that you that you had to learn on the fly? 
Well, you know, that's really a great question in that, you know, speaking to the first part of it, I, I am fearless. I always have been at 50 some years old. I mean, ever since I was a 17 year old kid and got on a plane from a small northern Wisconsin town and landed in Osaka, Japan for years an exchange student, you know, in a city that was what 20 times my, my hometown, not even 200 times from my hometown. Um, so, you know, you go in with that spirit of fearlessness, like I can do anything, put a big camera in front of me, you know, whatever it is, let's make it happen. But on the technical side of the learning curve, you know, the 15 minute part, like we spoke about, really was a learning curve, how to condense that. And that's why I brought you in. I knew I couldn't do it. People said, you should write this story. It's based on, you know, a good friend of Pam's, who's also a friend of mine. And, um, and he was very generous with sharing the background, which is, you know, my job there was to give you the notes that I felt were most critical uh, and allow you to do what you want. And I think that's really what I realized that learning curve for me is I don't have to do it everything. You know, often a filmmaker wants that true vision. And although I'm sitting in on color correction this morning after this call, and though I worked with Tony Domito, great composer who I've known as long as you almost, Mark, and who composed the music for this film, wonderful guy. He's done the music for the Kardashians, TV series, Empire. He's done the music for Law and Order, very talented like you. The reality on this project, Mark, is I realized, <clears throat> number one, it's about telling a story. So and I speak when I speak to schools and college kids and stuff coming out, it's like it doesn't matter what tool you have in front of you. Just have a story to tell. It will get told. And then number two is allow other people. They're part of the collaborative process. I am not opposed. I mean, I rein it in, but on the set, Mark, you would have loved it. I'm not opposed for an actor giving a viewpoint on what the set should look like. I wasn't opposed to our artistic director, LJ Thomas, to give opinion on um, – we had a story example, for instance, this story play, takes place in 1999, and I had a racially mixed couple walk, walking by as some extras, and she pulled me aside and said, Rick, you, you weren't here back in 1999. You didn't see that a lot. Do you really want that to happen? Of course I wanted it to happen because I think that's part of, quote, the story, back to my point. Mm -hmm. That's where the director stood in and said, I want that message in here. <clears throat> but she wasn't offended when I told her no, and I wasn't offended when she told me. So I think in answer to your question, don't have fear. Tell a good story. And the third part is allow others part of the process. I know you feel that way too, Mark. As you get older, it's like I don't have to own this 100%. I can share this with others and have them do their part. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's especially like with the audiobooks. I, I don't, I'm not a narrator, narrator. I was just – I just – I do think I chose good narrators, but they did their thing. I had nothing to do with it, and it came out fabulously. Now, tell people – well, you know we, the website, of course, which I also helped – Put up there. It's not necessarily a complicated website, but it's um keep, what it's keeping on movie movie. Dot, movie dot com keeping on movie dot com, and I have watched that that uh, those amounts go fabulously up on the Indiegogo page. But let people know how, where to find that, and so that they can be part of this. Well, yeah, and, and I want to shout out to Mark. We shout out to all of our donors. So when you make your do donation from from the site, we will shout out to you on our social media, which is keeping on movie on facebook as well so check out our website keeping on movie.com check out our website and keeping on be a part of that community i think we're 900 strong there we post to keep you updated on the process because because when you donate you really are one of the filmmakers in our opinion we want you to be a part of the process because it's you that's making the story happen so that the third element is on indiegogo just go to indiegogo i-n-d-i-e go go.com search for keeping on movie You'll see us come on uh, as keeping on short film, and you'll learn about the movie. You'll learn about the players. You can read Mark's bio, my bio, Tony's bio, Pam's bio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's a little link there that says donate. Now you can also go to keepingon.com and donate from there too. Mark set up a great donate link there. Five dollars is you know we'll take a dollar, but but you know five dollars. We have a lot of five dollar donors. I get a shout out. At ten dollar level, thirty dollars you get a signed DVD. Um, it goes on and on. If you happen to be in Treeport or if you're coming for the festival, like Mark and Frank are, you can buy a gift <laughs> certificate at one of our many great restaurants here. Um, it all makes a difference. That's Indiegogo.com. Search for KeepingOnMovie.com. After you hear this, it, it's this week. We're in our final ten days. So when you hear this, please go and donate. Make a difference in the LGBT community. Show that love does overcome hate. And thank you for supporting our movie. And thank you, Mark, for having me on as a guest. And Rick, thank you, as always, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for being on an another podcast with me. You know, it's part of our destiny. So It is, and now you got me challenged to rev up and have something to talk about next time we talk. Yeah, I'm really excited to work on the next project with you, Mark. I mean, we go way back from kids programming to to theater, you know, 
to and I'd love, so, I'd, so, love hey. I, I'd love to have you on like every, the like the like the first Saturday of every month or something like that, and then because we can do our thing, which we love to do. Yeah, we can just chit chat. We love to talk about stuff. politics. <laughs> we had no ch- no time today to get into that stuff, but crazy crazy world. Yeah, hey, yeah, that'll be cool. Actually, they just throw this as a quick aside. I am going out yesterday. I got my FBI background checked and got my ticket, uh, boarding ticket booked from my friend Donna. You know, my other best friend. You and she, top of my world. Got to have a gay man and a lesbian as your best friend. Absolutely. Well, Donna's flying me out to work the Philadelphia Convention, so I'll be part of history. Either we'll see Hillary walk off the stage in handcuffs, or we'll see her <laughs> move forward to be our next president. I don't know which way it's going to go, but. I will call in live from the Philadelphia Convention if you want me to. That'd be fun. Oh, I'd love that. Okay. Anyways, go do your thing. I'll do mine, and uh, I'll talk to Indiegogo. you. Indiegogo. Right. Indiegogo, babe. Yeah, I'll talk to you very soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, it's man. been another, uh, well, uh, well, another live mic podcast, and there will be many more. Bye.